I'm Ian Thomas, editor of Front Office Sports. I'm joined here by Janet Duke, president of the New York Guardians XFL. It's been a crazy buildup, I hear the start. What's it been like sort of jumping on the ground floor of this new league? Well, thanks for having me. Um, it's been incredible, you know, for us right now um, to be a part of a brand new league and being able to build a team from the ground up um, in the most competitive sports and entertainment marketplace. Um, it's, it's, it's been challenging, it's been exciting. Um, you know, the things that we've been focusing on is everything from operational, um, you know, facilities and housing for players and office spaces to building our staff up uh, to brand, you know, launching our brands and getting tickets on sale. And that has sort of been in the last nine months, um, which, you know, I was employee number one in 1A, uh, head coach and general manager Kevin Gilbride. Um, so for us, it's it's been a wild ride and, and more good things to come. And, you know, for us, certainly, um, I think you, when you take a step back and you think about why we're doing this, it really is for the love of football and building that fandom and giving fans more of the game that they love. So how do you, you come into a, a role like this with a blank sheet of paper, how do you start to put together a to-do list when, frankly, you have everything to do when you're launching a new franchise? Yeah, you know, we've certainly had the guidance and the vision from the league, right, of what the teams are going to be. Um, you know, I'm lucky that I have seven peers um, around the country that are going through the same thing that I'm going through. But I've been doing this for 20 years, um, you know, and I think that experience that I've had in sports has really shaped my way to building a team from, from the ground up. So you've had a lot of experience in the New York market, working at Madison Square Garden, working with the Rangers, with the Knicks and those brands. How are you approaching launching a new team into, like I said, a competitive marketplace? Uh, slowly. We know that this is going to take time, right? And, um, you know, we started off our journey of announcing our team names back in August. We put tickets on sale in late October and we're building that relationship with our fans. Um, we want to make sure that we are doing this the right way. We want to make sure that our story is coming out. And honestly, like we get a chance to co-create with our fans, with our players, with our partners and do this together. And I think that's what's been most exciting for us. Imagine to your point, I mean, the way fans consume sports now, the way fans connect with teams on social and digital platforms, it maybe in a way is, is easier to launch a team in 2020 than it would be in even 2000, just because of the way you can access and tell your story that way. You know, I think our social media has been a way for us to tell our story directly to our fans and really to, um, you know, the coaching staff, football operations has been just wonderful. Like we're on the field, we're behind the scenes, we're on the bus with the players. And I think fans get to see um, what it's like a day in the life of, of building a football team. How have you approached the ticketing and, and the strategy there? I mean, this is a new sort of property that I'm sure people want to experience first in some capacity. You also have the opportunity of football being one of the most obviously beloved sports in the world. Well, what's sort of been your approach to make sure that you do your best to, to fill the seats? Yeah, we are focused on the lower bowl at MetLife Stadium. Um, we know it's a world-class building. We know that there are two football teams there. Um, and for us, the way I look at it is we have a ticket experience for every fan. We have affordable pricing so you can bring the whole family out. Um, clearly we're, we have really affordable group pricing as if you want that social experience. We have club seats um, that will have some indoor hospitality access. And I think what I'm most excited about is we are putting um, seats on the field. So there will be a product where um, you're right behind the home team um, to start. Um, eventually we'll open that up to the visiting side. But fans will have an experience of being on the field and up close and personal and I don't think it gets better than and seeing that action that close. How do you go about creating some of those new traditions, new ways to connect with fans when you, you know, don't have necessarily a playbook to, to play with there? For the XFL, what we want to be about is ultra access. So we are working hard right now um, to, to get this, you know, team kicked off and the experience at the stadium. But we are focused on getting fans closer to the game that they love. And in stadium, that is really going to be about uh, field passes, high five lines for kids. We're gonna have anthem buddies lined up with, with the players. Um, we're gonna be doing player autographs and meet and greets post game. 
you know, we want to make sure that the sights and sounds of the games, um, from whether it's a player, from a coach, all of that content and all of those interviews are going live to the house. And that's just the in-game experience. You know, we recognize we're playing in winter um, here in the Northeast, and you know, we're going to be producing an indoor tailgate for fans. But we're also hearing from the diehards, like this is MetLife Stadium. Like when you go to an event there, it doesn't matter if it's football or a concert, they want to be there for tailgating. So you know, all of those things are being factored into the fan experience. Experience. And at the same time, we have two amazing media partners with ABC and Fox. So I think the broadcast of bringing that experience and that ultra access to fans home who are waiting to see um, before they come to the stadium and, and buy a ticket, um, I think they will have an opportunity to have very similar touch points with that ultra access about just getting in deeper and behind the scenes with our fans. Um, and then the other way is the way fans are consuming media these days, right? And that is all done digitally. Um, and I think that second screen experience of why you're watching um, or maybe following us remotely. Um, again, we want to make sure that we're introducing our players and the behind the scenes and the storytelling is coming to that generation and, and to those fans who are consuming us across um, our technology footprint. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure it's been exciting as I, I know the league itself is really leaning into this fan friendly experience. So from a team point of view, I'm sure it's fun to play with the kind of tools that you're uh, they, they've given you on that front. Yeah, I mean, you know, Building out a new team and being part of a new league, um, there's an opportunity here on the business side to reimagine the way um, we're introducing products, what the fan experience is. You know, I think a little bit of this is um, we've got to get this up and running first, and we've got to get the doors open and the team on the field and the, and the fans in the seats. But I think that vision and that approach is something that we're going to continue to build um, as the season goes on and as the years go on. Yeah, I'm sure there's some some element of you know right now the, the build up to the start of the season is exciting, but to your point after week one, after week two, and starting to see the feedback. It, there might even be more exciting when you can implement some of the things that people are saying or embracing some of the things they really love. Yeah, one of the most exciting platforms, and we've certainly um, have been engaging with it, is the XFL has launched a fan network. Um, we have thousands of fans from all over the country in, in, a, in a big portion within each of our own team markets. And we've really been wanting to hear from them. So we certainly, when we're ideating something in the office, we throw it out, um, put a question up on this online portal, and we get feedback from fans within days. So the tailgate was a great example for us about, um, you know, indoor, outdoor, what would you like to see? Um, are you gonna tailgate? It's February. So we just got like, the ability to get that real-time feedback and to hear from the fans and then to be able to implement it is sort of the approach that we're looking for. Um, we've used it to see where we want to host open practices, um, you know, whether it's a combination. We were just at West Point. Um, we brought some fans up there um, just to see where fans are coming from. Um, has just been an amazing opportunity to kind of build that relationship and, and have their voices heard. What has been one of the biggest challenges you, for you thus far in this, uh, this launch process? Wow, uh, one of the challenges. Um, I just, I, I think, you know, we've been fortunate. Time and resources have been on our side, but at the same time, it really is from the ground up. So whether it's operations, facilities, hiring a staff, all of that has been coming together. Um, and, you know, being in this marketplace, I think we're the 15th or 16th professional sports team, um, making sure that we're breaking through um, and just making sure that fans are aware that we're here in market and making sure that they are aware of sort of the differential and the point of view that we're offering um, sports fans these days. So obviously for, for you to be a uh, woman in this kind of role for, for a men's sport, sadly rare to some degree. I mean, how have you uh, embraced this role in that respect and what, what hope message do you hope this sends to the sort of other uh, aspiring female sports executives? Um, I've been a sports executive now for 20 years um, and certainly for me I'm, I'm proud, I'm humble to be in this role and certainly breaking down barriers for pro sports and in the industry. Um, I've been fortunate, I've had a lot of mentors throughout my career, um, both men and female, who have opened doors and helped groom my career. And you know, I would love to see more women um, at the table and have those th those roles. But for me right now, I'm focused on um, giving back. So what's been important to me is speaking on a lot of panels and making sure that I can share my story and my career path with other young women who are striving to be in sports, um, so that they know that they can continue to follow their dreams.